So as Sarah said, we are from the University of Chester. My name is Helen and this is Kim. We're going to talk to you about apprenticeships. You may know bits and bobs about them already. If you have any questions, feel free to ask as we go. Just pop your hand up so that we can see you. We will have some time for questions shortly. So the way this is going to work is we're going to talk about what apprenticeships are, who they're for, how they work as well, which is important. The finance side of things, because obviously that's what ties in with university as well, and also how you find and apply them, because it is different to how you would apply for university. Then I'm going to hand over to Kim, who is one of our current apprentices, who also works at the University of Chester, but I won't steal that under, she'll tell you all about that in a second. But like I say, if you've got any questions as we go through, feel free to ask them. You can ask Kim questions about what it's like to be an apprentice. And if there are any further questions, we can deal with them at the end. Okay, so we haven't got lots of time, so we're going to whiz through this as quickly as possible, so that if you do have questions, we can answer those as we go. Okay, so any thoughts? Can anyone tell me what an apprenticeship is? Does anyone know what one is already? You haven't got a Scooby. Anyone? Anyone help them out? Okay, so an apprenticeship is a form of qualification in the same way that your GCSEs are a form of qualification. They are a qualification that you get whilst you work at the same time. So sometimes they're called like if they're earning while you're learning. So it's, it's a combination of work but also of study. So if you are sitting there thinking, I'm not sure that studying at university, for example, is for me, then maybe an apprenticeship might be something that you would consider. So there are different types of apprenticeships. There are three different types. So we've got a, de a degree apprenticeship, a higher apprenticeship, and an apprenticeship that is um, so one that you could study after your GCSE. So there are three different types. A degree, obviously you know what a degree is, I'm sure. So a degree is the qualification you get from university. So after you've finished sixth form, you would go to university at that point if you wanted to. And that would take you, um, that would take you normally around three years. If you wanted to do a degree apprenticeship, then that would take you around, that would take you around up to six years, really. How long do yours going to take you? Okay. Four years, okay. So Kim's on a fast track. So Kim's on one that's got four years. So you've got, a degree apprenticeship is something that is delivered by a university alongside your employer. So in Kim's case, those two, uh, two things are the same. So the university is her, her employer and also the person who is providing her education. But in most cases, you will work for a company and they will be collaborating with the university who will provide that degree level of training for you as well. So it's kind of like you work for both, you work for both parts, you're part of both things. But first and foremost, it is a job. So you need to remember that. So you've got a degree apprenticeship, which is a high level qualification, and it's designed to develop your skills and your knowledge. So it's, it isn't just about developing knowledge, which is often what a university degree is about. It's also about developing your skill set too. And that is in the practicalities of being at work at the same time. So that's why you have the best of both worlds. An apprenticeship, which is level two to five. So you guys are studying at level two at the moment. When you go into sixth form, that'll be level three. And then at university, it's levels four, five, and six for the three years that you are there. So you can see that a level, uh, an apprenticeship that goes up to level five is sort of bridging the gap between those, between those areas. It isn't quite as... Um, as advanced as a degree apprenticeship, which goes up to level seven, as you can see there. So level seven, it can be, um, it's like a postgraduate course, so it's the same level as if you done a master's, for example. Not all degree apprenticeships go to that level. You might go to a level six, which is the same as a, a degree, an ordinary degree, but you have the opportunity, depending on which sector you might like to go into, to go into those different levels. So you can see that there are different levels available to you. So degrees are up to level six, Apprenticeships, levels two to five, and then a degree apprenticeship is sometimes level six, but, but a lot of the time level seven as well. So you've got both of those things. The thing to remember though, is that if you do choose to go for an appre a degree apprenticeship, is that you are employed. It isn't like when you go to university and you are there on, under your own steam, and you're there as a student of that university. 
When you join university as a degree apprentice, you are there as an employed person by another company. So that company is responsible for your tuition fees, for example. It's also responsible for making sure that you have the time that you need to get that work done. But it also requires an awful lot from you, which we'll talk about as well. So it's, it is an option that is available to you and one that you should really consider, although it's not available in every sector, so it may not suit you. But it's important for you to know about this option as well because it's something that is available to you, like I say. But it does require um, a different set of skills than, than going to, to university for a sort of straight degree, if you like. So the main differences, there's some differences up here. You get a level six when you are complete. You might be a level seven, actually, when you finish your degree apprenticeship, depending on what you go for. You also might be level seven, depending on what degree you go for. So some have what we call an integrated master's. So a master's is the degree after you've finished your first degree, and some, some courses offer that as well. So engineering is a key one for that, for example. A degree is delivered at university. You only learn at university. You might have some placements as part of that, depending on what you study, but more often than not, you are just delivered, uh, that is just delivered to you at university. It's full time. What we mean by full time is how, how many hours you're in school each week? Approximately. <coughs> Six a week. No, a week. No, not a week. Six a day. Yeah. So how many in a week? Six on five. Yeah. So about thirty hours. You're probably not going to be at university at thirty hours a week. So to give you an example, I studied English at university, and I was in probably ten hours a week. That's not to say that I just was like kicking my heels for the rest of the time. Just when I had work to do in my own time. But it does mean that full time means something different to how you might um, interpret it at the moment. You might have work experience opportunities. Most universities have those for you. So that might be integrated into your programme or it might be one that you sort out yourself. And it normally will take you three years, possibly four, depending on what you study. But more often than not, degrees last for three years. A degree apprenticeship, however, is delivered through an employer but at a university. So like I said, you are you are employed by the university by the employer first and foremost. So the company is responsible for you. And then they they sort of partner up with a university to provide their level of training, which is what results in your apprenticeship. So you have both of those elements there for you. It does combine almost full time work with distance or potentially block learning. So you are busier. You've definitely got more um, more time doing things when you do your degree apprenticeship because you may well be working full time which might be up to 40 hours a week and then within that you will have some time to go to university. Different degree apprenticeships are, are formatted in different ways so some you might go to university once a week, others you might um, every month you might go for a few days or some do big blocks where you might just go to university for say one month out of every year for example. So they are, they are delivered differently and they all come in different shapes and sizes depending on what you want to pursue. As a result of that, because you're not spending as much time doing your studying because you've, you've got that full-time job as well, it does take you longer. So on average, four to six years. You can see that that is longer than a normal degree, but not by loads. So you've got to weigh up what, um, what is most important to you. Because obviously at the, at the whole time you, you are studying for a degree apprenticeship, you're also earning a wage at the same time as well. Whereas with a degree, where do you get your money from when you have a degree? Loans, yeah, perfectly. So, so loans, or maybe you have a part-time job, for example, that isn't anything to do with your degree, but that's where you would get your money from. Whereas degree apprenticeship, you can rely on that salary. So a degree apprenticeship then is like a paid training opportunity, so to see it that way as it's a training opportunity where as a result the training that you do get results in a degree. So you are being upskilled in your work, in your day to day work for your job, but as a result of that you are also getting a degree as well. So it is one of those things that sort of think, you sort of think, oh wow I really am getting the best of both worlds here. As a result it means that they are very competitive. And it also means they're very competitive because there aren't as many as there are university places. So that's something for you to consider. If you are thinking, or oh, maybe a degree apprenticeship would suit me actually, 
then start your research now. There's no such thing as doing it too early because then you can start thinking about the skills that you need to develop and what you might need in order to apply. So you learn at university and you use the university resources, the, the environment at university is, is there for you as well. You utilise the expertise of the staff at university. But also at work you are employed and you're getting that industry experience as well. So you're having that practical work experience too. And then at the end you qualify with the highest level of, a, of an apprenticeship. It means it's very valuable in the workforce because it, you've proven that not only can you manage a degree level study but you can also manage a full time wage as well. So you've got, you've got both of those things happening at the same time. So who they're for then? Well, they're for everybody. They can be for everybody, but they don't exist in all sectors of work. So it will depend what you want to go on to do in the future. What sort of things do people want to do or be? Has anyone got any ideas of what they want to do? Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering, perfect. So it's the classic um, degree apprenticeship is in, is in engineering. It's, it's one of those uh, routes that there's lots of different routes into, into engineering. Perfect example, this definitely would be for you. Anyone else know what they want to do? Want well, to do architecture? Brilliant. At the moment, um, not that many degree apprenticeships in architecture, mainly because architecture is the longest degree, and so did you know it was the longest degree that you could do? Pick the longest one, your student for the longest time. So it's seven years to become a qualified architect, but within that you have lots of placements as well. So you, it's not to say that degree apprenticeships don't exist, but more often than not you will find a degree course more suitable for you. So you'll see, you can see that there are different routes into different areas, so it really depends on what you want to study. But broadly speaking, they are for everybody. You need to apply for the job first, though. It's not like applying for university. You apply first and foremost to be an employee of the company that you are wanting to work for. So you have to pass that assessment criteria first, and then you may well also be asked to interview for university too. However, the most important part is making sure that you pass the assessment criteria for the job that you are applying for. They will check that you meet both sets of criteria, and there may well be some subject specific or academic testing that they want to make sure that you are, uh, that, that you're going to be suited to, to this route into work as well. Maths and English, I'll just say this really quickly. As a general rule, you need your maths and English for all courses. That isn't, that isn't um, set in stone for everything, but as a general rule, you want your maths and English anyway. So you, you're looking at a grade four or five for maths and English, which I'm sure you're all aiming for anyway. Some courses do require other things, so engineering for example, they will probably want you to have maybe a physics or a maths A level or an engineering qualification. Others don't mind what you've, what you've had for A level as long as you've done well in them. Like I say, the requirements do vary between different courses and different universities, so it is worth doing the research. And it is a bit trickier to do the research than it is to do university research, which I'll explain shortly in just a second. So the things to remember then, the typical criteria, A-levels or BTEC, so level three qualifications are the next phase for you guys in, in your educational journey. You have to be someone that will be willing to, to work hard. So it isn't just about doing a degree, it's also about doing a degree and full-time work at the same time. So it doesn't suit everybody but it is something that you, you have to be willing to be able to really throw yourself into. So you need to think about whether that suits you as a person. So you have to be committed to the full duration of the programme. Can't quit halfway through because the company is invested in you by, um, by paying for your tuition and paying for your training. You have to be determined um, and that is because the, it's, it's a longer time. You have to manage both of those things. So it really suits people who are very driven and who want to have both that practical and academic side of, of employment. So initiative, drive, being adaptable and flexible. And you have to remember that you will be employed for at least 30 hours a week. So you're going to have less free time. So that's something for you to consider about what, about what the experience might be, and whether it suits what you're looking for from, from the next phase in your education or employment life. 
some personal qualities, so good problem solver, good critical thinker. To be fair, these are useful for pretty much all jobs and all universities as well. So that's just something for you to, to bear in mind. So how they work, we've sort of talked about this um, a little, but four to six years on average, so Kim's is four years, it can go up to six though. It may be that there's a little bit of wiggle room within that, it may go slightly beyond, but you, you tend to find that they are between four and six years, so longer than an ordinary degree because you're doing it alongside work. A higher apprenticeship, just to say, which is the ones that go up to level five and not level six or seven, they can take between two and four years, which we mentioned at the start. So your employment, you study at the same time for a bachelor's or a master's degree, so a degree or a higher level degree. Your learning is work-based, so a lot of the stuff that you will learn, you will learn academically, but then you'll put it <coughs> in practice in your workplace. You, you are taught on what we call core competencies, so whatever degree you are going for, whatever degree of apprenticeship it is that you're going for, it's based on certain things that are really important to that role. So it might be critical thinking, it might be um, problem solving, for example. There are competencies that you need to be able to tick off by the end of it, and that's where your university staff and mentors will come in to help you do that as you go along. So theory and practice are directly related to one another. So you can, it's not about learning things in the abstract, it's about learning things in the classroom, at university that you can then go on to apply in your day-to-day -day -day work in life, which again is a really brilliant link between both of those things. University, so you will have a mentor, as I've just mentioned, so someone from the university who's there to look after you. You are able to have the same um, access to all of the university facilities, the student's union, the sports facilities, the um, social side of things, is all available to you as it would be if you were studying an ordinary degree. The thing to remember is that you won't have as much free time, so it may be that you can't access as much of that as you may have done if you were studying for a degree uh, in isolation. Can you afford it? So we touched on loans, so if you want to go to university, you know, you apply for a loan. That is to pay your tuition fees, but also to help you with living costs as well. Who pays for your degree if you're doing a degree apprenticeship? Employer. The employer, absolutely. So the employer pays for that, so you don't have to worry about that. So a degree apprenticeship, government funding is available. That's through the employer, and you will not be responsible for any university fees. That's why you have to know that you're committed to it. It's a real investment in your development that the company is making on your behalf. So you're not eligible to apply for student loans, but you will have your salary. So that's something to remember. You may have a salary that's much more. Than your, than your student loan um, entitlement would have been if you were at university. So it's, it's to weigh it up as to what's most important to you. There's a range of different subjects. I've just put a list up there of, of things that are very common for degree apprenticeships. So you'll see things like engineering, for example. But you'll also see nursing, policing, so things that are vocational as well. Um, as well as sort of uh, knowledge base. You've got things like digital in industries, construction, business, lots and lots of different areas, and they're growing all of the time. So it might be that you do your research at the moment and there isn't anything there for you, but maybe in a year or two's time, it could well be that there are degrees that exist in that area at that point, because they're being developed all the time, because this is a really viable route into higher education and a way for companies to really invest in their workforce. So that's why it's growing all of the time. So it is worth checking um, regularly. Well, where do you check? How do you find them? Well, it's not as easy as applying for university, as I said, where there's one website that has all of the university places. And the reason it's not as easy is because apprenticeships are happening all throughout the year. It doesn't work on an academic year basis like school or college or university does. Jobs are being advertised all of the time so that's why you need to just keep an eye on the list because it's being updated daily in some cases and, and so it's important for you to keep abreast of what is happening you can apply through the university you can't apply through the university you apply through the employer however if there is a university that you know you'd like to go to or that offer an apprenticeship you are interested in you can contact them to see which employers use them for their training 
because that might be another way for you to, to find the employers that would be suitable for you. A CV is, imp is important. I'm sure you've worked on that in, in um, careers lessons and stuff like that. It's not useful in lots of um, in lots of areas. Some places don't accept CVs, but an apprenticeship would, would want to see what you're all about and what your qualifications are and stuff like that. So it is important. And it's important that you prepare yourself for an interview that may well include some of the academic sides of university as well as some of the competencies from an employment um, point of view. Okay, so you find them by looking at local businesses or businesses that you'd like to work for. They may not all be household names, so think of the set that you want to go into and do a bit of research on your own. But there are also, so the, the UCAS is the website where you apply for university and they have some of them on there as well. But also the government has a national government apprenticeship page, which is great. It's got lots of stuff on there, but, but employers aren't obliged to put their adverts on there either. So it is worth, if you know there's a company that you quite like to work for, keep an eye on their own websites too, because they may well be, be just advertising it um, individually. Okay. I'm going to share that link with you, you'll have the slides, so you can have a look at the, at the website and what it looks like, so it shows you all of the different levels of apprenticeships that are available, and you can, you can look at that to your heart's content, but I'm going to hand over to Kim. Um, so, thanks Helen, I'm sorry, this is. <laughs> uh, so I'm an apprentice myself, um, so I work at the University of Chester, but I'm also doing a degree of apprenticeship at the same time. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about my journey and how I ended up doing an apprenticeship. Um, so yeah, as Helen said, my name's Kim. Um, so for me, um, when I finished my A-levels, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. So at first I was looking at you know, maybe going to university and doing a degree in maybe law or philosophy. But for me, I knew that that wasn't the right journey. I liked having the freedom of earning a wage and um, I wasn't sure whether the traditional university style of teaching was for me. So that's when I started looking at apprenticeships and I came across the Chartered Manager Degree Apprenticeship. Um, so that's the one that I'm currently on. So I got mine through the government website. So the University of Chester was advertising a position where I would be doing the Chartered Manager Degree Apprenticeship whilst also working for them um, as a member of staff. So um, I applied. Now, obviously, as Helen has mentioned, it was very different to maybe if you were going to apply to university. So to get the job that I got, I had to go through four different stages um, of recruitment. Uh, I had to do different tests. I had to interview. Uh, I had to complete tasks because there's a lot of people applying for one job role, which obviously then I was successful in gaining. So my apprenticeship provider is the University of Chester. So all of my teaching, my lectures, my my library, everything is at the University of Chester. So just in the same way as if you were to go to the University of Chester to do a degree, um, I get the exact same support, but I'm just on an apprenticeship. So for me, um, instead of maybe how, if you were doing a full time, you would be going in every single week. The structure of the Chartered Manager is that I'll start a module, I'll go in for two days. Um, it will be intensive, two days of lectures where I'll learn everything to do with that module. So. If it was finance, I'd be doing two days all about finance. If it was project management, it'd be two days all about project management. And then you'll get an assignment set for you at the end of that, and you have to go away, and you have like eight weeks to write this assignment. So during that time, my workplace will give me one day a week that's allocated for my study. So that's when I'll do all my reading, my research, I'll write my assignment to then hand it in after the eight weeks. So other than that one day, all of the rest of the time I'm working full time in my workplace just the same way as every other member of staff in my department has deadlines, meetings, uh, projects that they have to complete. I have to do the exact same thing but I'm also out of the workplace one day a week and having to complete my assignment at the same time. So as you can imagine it can be quite stressful and it means that I have to be really good with time management and you have to make sure that you are communicating and meeting all of your deadlines at the same time. So. It's definitely, I think, one of the things I constantly hear is, oh, well, that's amazing because, you know, you're earning money, but you're also doing your degree. But I think you also do have to remember that, for me, I'm employed, that's my first kind of responsibility, is as somebody working in the workplace and obviously trying to do my job. 
Um, so obviously my employer is the University of Chester, but the reason <coughs> I underline that and put mine is because that just happens to be the same thing. But for a lot of people on my course, they work all over the place, like they're all from all different organisations, doing all different sorts of jobs. Um, but the Chartered Manager Degree Apprenticeship suits their job role as well for the skills and the knowledge that they've got to learn at the same time. So the benefits of an apprenticeship for me was that um, I was gaining the latest industry knowledge, um, it was making me feel more confident within my job role and the ability to use the classroom knowledge in my workplace as well because um, as Helen said all of the assignments are work based so um, when I get an assignment on project management I have to go back into my workplace and find a project that's based off of what I'm doing in work. So it means that what I'm writing about in my assignment is actually what I do in my job. So they kind of help each other out. So it means it's also helping your workplace at the same time as helping you because you're able to use all of the stuff you're learning in the classroom actually then in the workplace as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a quick summary from me about apprenticeships and how my experience has been. Um, so has anybody got any questions? Uh, yeah. What sort of things do you get assigned? In work or in? Uh, in the Chester um, University. Uh, like my projects. Yeah. Um, so one of my modules uh, that I'm on at the moment is finance. So um, I've had to learn all about financial ratios and then what I'm having to do, the project that I've been set, is that I have to take a financial decision that I've made in my workplace um, and I have to use the ratios and work through the assignment and explain why I made the decisions that I made. So it's kind of taking the stuff that I've learned, like all of the theory, and then looking at it in a practical sense and saying how I then utilise that to make decisions, um, to justify the decisions I've made then in work. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of, that's, it's, that's kind of what it like for each module, so for the project management then I had to pick a project that I was working on and then see like how I would use the theory in order to help it and benefit it and, and evaluate if, if it worked basically. Yeah. 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 Do you have to set any final exams with an apprenticeship? So it depends on what apprenticeship you decide to do. Um, for mine, mine, I have no <coughs> exams, mine's all um, coursework, it's all assignment based. So I never have to go and sit in, exa in an examination hall, which is one of the reasons why I liked the Chartered Manager, because it means that I'm just writing assignments and I get the opportunity to hand in a draft as well. So the lecturers will help me and you know give me advice on where they think I could improve on it. Um, and the, the staff at the University of Chester have been really supportive, um, so that's really helped. Um, but yeah, so for me personally, I've had to sit in no exams, um, and that'll be the same for the rest of my course. Question? How old do you have to be to get a pension? Um, you could be any <coughs> age. So um, when I got mine, I was 19. Um, but a lot of people on my course, some of them are like 40, 50 years old. You can get an apprenticeship at whatever at whatever age. It, it doesn't stop. What, what's like the minimum age? So the, so the minimum for the degree, yeah. mine was 18. Mm. Uh, because obviously I had to have done my A levels to get the to get onto the course. Yeah. yeah. You can do level three apprenticeships from 16 though. It's just that that will, will not get you up to the level six. You might then top it up to a degree apprenticeship, but a degree apprenticeship is at least 18. Yeah. If you do a level three apprenticeship, can you go on and do another apprenticeship? Yeah, yeah, you can. So um, I, there's people that I know that have done the degree that I'm doing, the chartered manager, the level to the level six, and then they go on and they do the senior leader, which is a level seven. Um, so you can do as as many apprenticeships really as you want, as long as there's no kind of crossover in the knowledge um, that you've got previously. So to be eligible for the funding for an apprenticeship, um, it has to be all new knowledge. So you couldn't go and do a business um, degree and then decide you wanted to do the chartered manager because I'm getting a business de degree out of it, if that makes sense. So it, you have to just make sure that what apprenticeship you're applying to, it's going to be like a new skill, for instance. Yeah. Thanks guys, we'll have to go because the bell's gone. Can we give them a round of applause please?